God often surrounds you in your attentiveness through trials, but you surround God through seed. You surround him through seed. The more you give yourself over to the seed principle, the more you have not only of things, but of God's presence himself. He has engrafted himself into the seed. Have you ever thought that if the father never would have sold, you could have never became a virtuous woman? If the father never cheerfully gave, you can never become a king. What did Revelation chapter one say? It says that his blood has made us kings and priests. His blood. So if there was no blood, if there was no blood, there's no king. There's no priest. All of those elements came from the blood. And the blood would not have been able to release if the father didn't use the seed. So the blood came out of seed. Wow. So every time you sow a seed, you release in the blood. Because the blood came out of the seed, which is King Jesus. The father sowed him. And out of that seed came blood. So imagine the blood covenant is seed activated. If it wasn't for the seed, there would be no blood. If the seed is never sown, there is no redemption. So every time you're sowing, you're redeeming time. You're taking back the time where you're without, without the manifestation of God's presence, without the manifestation of God's promise. His presence and his promise is all wrapped up in the seed because it's something that he enjoys. So the father used seed sowing to give you a new life. How much more seed sowing manifests that life when you take on that same nature? I want to say this to you that you cannot even receive the nature of God until you become conscious about sowing. You got to become conscious about sowing. You can't even take. You can't even take on the new nature as a born again child of God without taking on the seed, because that's what the father used to start everything. Do you understand being born again? That concept wouldn't even be able to manifest if the father never sold. So, so imagine if you try to operate born again without sowing. Imagine how far you is. Because that's the origin of being born again. Remember, it was the seed talking to Nicodemus. <laughs> the seed was talking to Nicodemus. That, that's how you understand that the seed has a voice. The seed talks. The seed is explaining to Nicodemus about what it means to be born again. So, so the seed in itself knows things about being born again that you need to understand. So woman of God, man of God, until you take sowing serious, there's certain things that you don't even understand about your born again nature. My God. <laughs> Y'all playing, y'all playing on this Friday night. You playing, you playing. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and watch this service three. I probably got about seven more services tonight. Huh? It's like I'm playing. We're going to be full pack all this weekend though. Y you ain't hear what I'm telling you. I just said that the seed was having a conversation with Nicodemus. Oh my God. <laughs> Say, ain't, no, ain't nobody ever preached this. I promise you, go look it up on YouTube. Go look it up on Google. Saints, 
The seed was having a conversation with Nicodemus to explain to him what it meant for him to be delivered, for him to be divine, for him to be a king, for him to be redeemed, for him to be on top, to him to be blessed, for him to be free. It was talking to him about his born again nature. That's why I told you that when you start sowing and you are honoring God, that's why I told you that it brings you into qualities that you didn't know that you had. That's why you become supernatural through the seed. Sowing seed make you supernatural. God didn't pick that law just for uh, money coming. Yeah, money going to come because whatever you sow, you're going to reap. But he picked that law for you to identify hidden treasure inside of you. You got hidden treasure inside of you. And every time you honor God, you step into that hidden treasure. That's why witty inventions, ideas, instructions, mindsets, concepts. All those things are inside of you and is unlocked and unraveled when you're honoring God. When you honor the Lord with what you have. When you start sowing creatively. Your creativity moves in your mind. Zipporah, I'm going to boast in you for a minute since you just had a miracle recently. Look at Zipporah. Zipporah, her and her husband, they honor me like little children. They act like little children. Not childish. I'm talking about level of humility. The Bible said that, uh, what's his name? Moses was the most humblest man in Numbers chapter 12. And they've been with me since, what, 2016 or something like that. And they operate like little children, which, not foolishness, I'm talking about massive humility. And she just had favor, and she sold. Do you know that she got the stimulus check and sold it all into me? Did you know that she got the stimulus check this year? And she sold it, all of it. See, Zipporah, you see how the Holy Spirit remember your seed. Multiply into the realm of favor. Favor is always a harvest. When God can speak to you to bless your man of God, he can speak to others to bless you. When God can speak to you to take care of your man of God, God can speak to others to take care of you. Whatever you do for your man of God, whatever you do for your man of God, whatever you do for your man of God, God will reward you double. He's not a respecter of persons. If you bless your man of God, if you take care of your man of God, if you make sure your man of God good, God will make sure you good. The Holy Ghost not scared of no demon. He not scared of no evil. He not scared of no wickedness. He is the overseer over the whole earth. He let man do what they want to do, but when he ready to step in. I say he let man do what they want to do, but when he ready to step in. I say he let man do what they want to do, but when he ready to step in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, the seed will work for you. The seed will work for you. The seed will bring you into rest for your soul. The Holy Spirit want to make your life easier. He know. You already a target. Once God got his hand on you, you already a target. You can't run from being a target. The devil know when you got a little bit of light on your life. If you know a little bit about Jesus, if you hear about Jesus, he hates you even more. Because he know that you got a seed of Jesus in your knowledge that you can tap into that seed and multiply it and live a harvest of being free. Live a harvest of being wise. Live a harvest of being delivered. Live a harvest of being uh, a deliverer. 
Saints, do you understand what I'm telling you? That Satan is scared of, of a seed of you knowing about Jesus. If you hear Jesus' name, he marked you. He know you. What I'm telling you is that you don't want to live in this life as a slave. Use the seed to break the spirit that made Adam fall. Remember, it was a serpent and the seed crushes the head of the serpent. The seed principle, every seed that God has, has serpent crushing power so that nothing by any means shall be able to alienate you from your inheritance and from your position. You secure your position through seed. The Holy Spirit talks to you in the realm of honor more than any other realm. Saints, look at the first thing King Jesus tells a man. He says, what shall I do to receive eternal life? You see what King Jesus take him to the seed. This your Bible now, baby. This your Bible. You don't read your Bible now, baby. This your Bible. I know, I know you don't read the Bible, baby, but this your Bible. The first thing he, he didn't say go on a fast. Come on, let's fast 40 days and 40 nights. Baby, some of y'all can't for fast for four minutes. Stop trying to do a 40-day fast. You, you heard of the nigga that did all the 40-day fast? He died. That nigga died real quick. His congregation wicked. Somebody should have stood up and dishonored him. Say, it's better for me to dishonor you now than for you to die and go to hell. Sir, don't go on the 40-day fast. Don't do it. Don't do it. I, I, know, I, know, I know you think you're Jesus Jr., but don't do it. Saying fasting ain't no joke. You even need authority to go on a fast. Somebody should have dishonored him and stood up. I would have did it. If I was one of his sons and daughters, I would have did it. I was like, Daddy, I'm, Daddy, I don't mean to disrespect you, but you're not Jesus Jr. Don't go in there four-day fast. You might kick me out of church, but I'm trying to let you know. King Jesus didn't tell the man to go on a fast. He told the man, step into seed. Step into seed. Saints, this is remarkable. King Jesus asks the man, the man asks Jesus, how do I receive eternal life? How do I live forever in heaven? And King Jesus said, you got to sow. Go take what you have and start sowing it. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, ah. Saints, do you know the Lord, I was driving and the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, son, everybody that hate prosperity hate prophets as well. He said, just study it. You never see someone that love prophets talk about prosperity. You always see people that hate the idea of prophets, they hate prosperity because prosperity and prophets go together. A prophet is the birth canal of all of your prosperity. The instruction of a prophet is a womb. And the, and the instruction of a prophet delivers you from your tomb. And the instructions of a prophet makes room. That's why even Elisha, he with the Shunammite woman, even she made room in her house for him. But that was the power, the presence of Elisha in her life. She didn't think about making no room until Elisha came in her life, the presence of a prophet. The instructions of a prophet, it's a womb. It carries babies that are supposed to be birthed in your finances. Saints, do you know how many aborted children that you have of wealth? Do you know every time you got offended, every time you left prematurely, do you know every time you, you, you uh, was discouraged, you didn't have inspiration, do you know that you abort your children? Wealth abortion, what, destroying the children of harvests. You can destroy... Harvest children. You can kill them while they're in the womb. Because when your belly shut down on listening to God about sowing seed, you can't produce no harvest. Harvest is subject to seed. You don't pray to get a harvest. You sow to get a harvest. What person you see in the Bible went on a fast and you saw them get a harvest of, of wealth? <laughs> you don't see nobody up there didn't eat no food and get no harvest of wealth. No, they had to sow their way out. 
They had to sow their way out. They had to give God something for him to multiply. Even King Jesus wasn't about to feed nobody. He said, what y'all got? I need somebody to give me something up in here. If you give it to me, I'll give it to, back to you now. I'll throw it back at you. You throw it at me first, I'll throw it back at you. But what I'm going to throw at you is going to be way more than you can handle. You notice King Jesus, he needs you to bust the move first. He didn't tell Peter, I'm going to come, come meet you. He said, come. You step out here and then you find my power at work. That's what happened with the seed. That's what I did too, people of God. I stepped out and found the power of God is on sowing waters. Ah! Ah! I, I stepped out and found that the power of God, the glory of God, that same Holy Ghost that was hovering in Genesis, the Holy Ghost is hovering when you're sowing. Sowing waters is where the Holy Ghost hover. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, sowing waters is where you find the Holy Ghost hovering over you, where he bring you into a new season, a new place, a new life, a new flow. Your flow is in where you sow. Your flow is in where you sow. Your flow is when you sow. Your flow is in how you sow. God loveth a cheerful giver. Now I want to show you something in the text. I was showing Juan this and we shouted over it. Because it's crazy. It's crazy. I was showing Juan this. And uh, I'll be teaching Juan some exclusive things on the law. And he don't even preach it. It's just secretive stuff that, that, that's as men, as men, as men, as men of God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not for the public. It's just, it's just for your, 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 your flow. Now, Isaiah 43, verse 26. Look what God says. And I want you to understand this. Your seed wrestles with God and proves to him why you're credible for wealth. Why you're credible for the blessed life. This is, let me, I'm going to say something that never been spoken before by any preacher. Your seed is your argument with a holy God of why you deserve to live like him. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I gotta go. <laughs> Take off. Huh? Come on. <laughs> your seed is your argument to a holy God of why you are credible, why you worthy to live like him. Not be free from sin. Yeah, you worthy to be free from sin. But why should you live like him, like a boss? Huh? What? what, what? Ha! I say, ah, ma, para, pa, para, pa. Ore, ma. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, no, 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 see. I'm talking about why should he allow you to take on his same environment how he lived. In the same luxury, in the same dominion, in the same height, in the same depth, in the same reigning, in the same crown, in the same power. Why should he pit wealth power on you? Your seed is a convincing device. It's a deliberating device. You deliberate with God when you sow. Saints, I come to tell you that seed sowing is a court case mantle. Oh my, <laughs> I got to get out of here, man. I got to get out of here, man. No, 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 no. Everything that you don't have that you're supposed to have is not in your manifestation yet because you got to win the court case. I say you got to win the court case. And the seed is a court case mantle to always get a verdict of release. The seed got court case authority for the judge to be able to render the verdict that he always wanted to render without the accuser of the brethren winning. Do you know that the accuser of the brethren has often stopped the wealthy place of the body of Christ because the accuser of the brethren can use what you're doing as a means to convince the case of why you do not have credibility to walk in your covenant. You don't believe it? 
You don't believe it? The accuser of brethren can go up to heaven and say, Lord, according to your word, you said poverty and shame shall be to him that refuse instruction. He said, Lord, even though you love this one right now, what instruction have they obeyed from their prophet in order for them to unlock prosperity? According to your law, you say that if you believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. Why should they have prosperity if they haven't obeyed the law in which prosperity flows? You don't believe it? Let's go a little deeper. Father, your child right here is operating in strife. Now, you said that you are love. God is love. So they feuding with uh, sister so-and-so, brother Eldra, Eldred so-and-so. So according to your law, how could you bless somebody that's operating in strife? When you said in Proverbs to King Solomon that a proud heart stirred up strife. Now, Lord, according to pride, pride cancels everybody from the covenant, correct? Because even you kick me out. <laughs> so uh, your honor, according to law, according to your law, this person is disqualified from having wealth. Am I right, your honor? What can God say? Some of you all will say, well, it's the blood. The blood going to fight for me. Baby, check your bank account. Find out where the blood fall for you. Check your bank account. How old you is? Check your bank account, baby. Huh? Huh? Check your bank account, baby. Just and check your bank account. Find out. Find out. Find out. Get your balance for the last five years. Find out. Let's see if the blood fall for you. Come on, baby. Come on. We ain't got no time now. Come on. Come on. I just got a couple of minutes. I got a couple more seconds on me. I got a couple more seconds on me. Go and check your bank account while we on the line. I'll give you some time. Go check it. You ain't got to check it, baby. I know. You ain't got to check it. You ain't got to check it. Saints, the accuser of the brethren has authority without when you don't have no seed. The accuser of the brethren got authority when you ain't got no seed. Look at Job. The only reason why the accuser of the brethren wasn't able to touch his children because of his seed sowing. The Bible said that he would go out and sow seed and name the seed. Unless my children will curse God in their heart. I'm sowing. And the devil couldn't touch them even when they was in sin. Saints. Job's boys was wild. Job's girls was wild. Job's daughters came home with white stains on their black shirt. One of Job's sons was scratching. Moving along strong. I got to finish this. I got two more minutes on me. I got two more minutes on me. And all that was going on with Job's children, they was drunk, smelling like a skunk, hanging with their unk. And they still couldn't be touched by the devil. Their life was preserved because of the seed. Imagine, <laughs> imagine, that all demonic power was held up from touching them, even though they was engaged in the demonic. Imagine dancing with a demon. You dancing with a demon, but they can't touch you. You you cha cha. You done. You done. You done cha cha. You done. And, and you dancing with a demon. You can't touch my life, though. You can't touch my life because the seed got a hedge around them. It's not because they powerful. It's because their daddy's sowing. Seed so and so powerful that it not only protects you from danger, it protects your children. Some of you are on here, you don't have children now or you may have had children already. Your seed so powerful that it will deliver your children even if you misraise them. Now, I want to say something strong to you. In all these things, there's wisdom. So some of y'all right now, you probably got somebody right now. Uh, there's different strokes for different folks. Let me say this to you. You got a child right now. If your child encounter God and they just outright curse God, da, 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 da. That, 
you know, some scenarios is kind of different. Because there is a realm of Jesus where Jesus tell you to disconnect from your children, disconnect from your parents. You see what I'm saying? That's different. Don't, don't, don't take my word and say, I'm going to sow for, for my daddy, your daddy in witchcraft. You sow for your daddy, your daddy in witchcraft, and like your daddy already encountered Jesus, and he just decided he outright didn't want Jesus. Yeah, you can sow for him, but don't call him up on the phone talking about, Daddy, I want to hang with you. I want to I be around you because I know my seed working for me. No, because your daddy going to mess around and impart stuff to you from the realm that he in, and, and you're moving unwisely. You see, you, you're moving like Ronald Isley. Drive me crazy. Drive me wild. All right. All right. Don't stop me now. Let me finish what I got to do. I got two more minutes on me. I got two more minutes on me. We're going live. I got two more minutes on me and we're going live. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 26. I just heard God say, sowing is a priestly anointing release. I just heard God say that. Sowing is a priestly anointing release. And priests, though they were teaching the word, they became receivers of people sowing into their life. What you got to catch is when you're sowing, you receive a priestly anointing. That's why if you got a business or you just, you just, listen, you ain't even got to have a business. Because I didn't have a business like that. I, I had a evangelistic ministry that I was moving in as a prophet. I was traveling. My whole teenage years, I was just traveling. So I didn't have no business. I learned business, um, uh, a lot of business wisdom as I got near, um, near, you know, 18 and stuff. But when I was 14, 15, 16, all that stuff, this, that. God put a spotlight on you when you honor him. God put a spotlight on you when you honor him. And wherever you go, somebody got to see you underneath the microscope and know that you are worthy for their help. Somebody going to see you and know that you worthy of their favor. Somebody going to see you and know that they can invest their substance. You know, I was on Facebook. Facebook kind of funny. I'll be preaching to the world. Somebody was arguing. They was like, the Bible didn't say money. It says substance. It said, I'm the Lord with your substance. Somebody was arguing. They said, it don't say money. It says substance. Baby, I want to see how many times you've been married. I want to know. I want to know how many boyfriends you had. How many, how many, how many ducks in? Who, who ducks you? Because I need to know whether. Where the, where the transfer came from? Where the transfer of spirits? Where the milk dog? Well, who, who the milk dog that? Who raised you? What's your parents? What's your parents' name? Where they live? What city and state? Date of birth? Date of birth? What's the sex? What's the, uh, what's the race? I need to know all that. I need to know your background because... Baby, substance mean money. And, and saints, it be so funny when people try to correct you and they correct you out of their arrogance, but they don't even know what they're talking about. The seed make God put the spotlight on you and somebody going to find you. That see you worthy to multiply you. Saints, Abraham kept on encountering people that felt like he was worthy to have money from them. Saints, the life of seed sowing is an adventure. 
Psalm 115 verse 14 says, the Lord shall increase you more and more. That means that he not stopping if you don't stop, but you got to keep on sowing. Saints, I took sowing serious. For some of you all, sowing is an event. You do it every now and again. You dress up for it every now and again. But sowing has to become a part of your creative thinking. So many people trying to start entrepreneurship with an actual business. How come you never did entrepreneurship with the father's business? I got to go, man. I got I to gotta go. All right. I got to go. This. I, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Are you catching this? How come you never use entrepreneurship abilities with the seed? How come you, you never took the time to find out how to find uh, the hot spot, the Wi-Fi of God in your finances? The connectivity, the password. My God. Oh, Jesus. I said, Imagine when you find the password seed that God looking for, that's going to enter you into the whole. Imagine. See, one thing that children of God have been enslaved in is looking at the natural bank system. When you got a divine bank system, that you was created to pull from constantly. You got a divine bank system that you're supposed to eat from. Saints, you didn't catch it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You thought that that's just God feeding you the word. Saints, it also means that the mouth of God has bread in it, hidden. You ain't got to make stuff happen because if you listen to his mouth, his voice, if you listen to his voice, it got money, it got provision, it got everything that you could dream or desire inside of it. So don't live by bread that in the natural realm. Live by the bread that comes from the mouth of God because this bread is first his voice, but then it causes you to rejoice. Number one, it's his voice. Number two, it causes you to rejoice. Because it's the harvest. Remember the Bible talk about in Psalm that when you sow and, and uh, you give precious seed, you shall come back rejoicing with your sheaves in your hand. Rejoicing is a harvest manifesting behavior. Somebody, some of y'all need to write that down. Rejoicing is a harvest manifesting behavior. Service three. Service three. I mean, we just getting started. We got we got a, we got about a whole hour impartation. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. 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 Service three. Service three. Imagine. <laughs> Service three. Service three. Service three. Ma carapa soto pore des. Father, I receive harvests in my life. Father, I receive harvests in my life. I receive harvests in my life. Father, I receive supernatural harvests. I thank you for giving me a harvest anointed. I thank you for making me soar. As I choose to sow in this life, I thank you for causing the soul, divine nature of God to arise in me. You said if I give, it shall be given unto me. I receive, it shall be given unto me right now. My God. Yes, 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 yes.